first things first, as always, when I get up in the morning, I make myself a cup of tea. And I do that by boiling the water in my microwave. Good morning and welcome back to another video. We are off to Kingsbridge this morning. Quite dark outside still. It's one degree. Um, my night heater is on. I'm in quite a tight lay-by, so I need to be careful when I go out and do my daily checks. I have a good look around the lorry, looking for any defects and make sure that it's roadworthy for my journey today. And everything seems absolutely fine, apart from the very cold weather. It's definitely time to get back in the cab. Right, that's the daily checks done and I'm just going to have a little look at the map to where I'm going. So it's going to take me just under an hour to get down there. It is a bit of a, a windy road down to Kingsbridge. Well, I go through Kingsbridge and out the other side. Not the best of roads, but anyway, careful and get on with it. I've got a lot to do today, so I want to get on while the traffic is still quite quiet. I take the A384 towards Totnes, which takes me over Riverford Bridge. There are two main ways to get down to Kingsbridge in a lorry. One is through Totnes and the other is through Modbury. Personally, I prefer this way through Totnes, but it does depend where you are going to near Kingsbridge and where you are going from. And after some long winding dark roads, I get to Kingsbridge. As I said before, I'm going right through Kingsbridge to the other side, as the farm I am picking up from is just outside of Kingsbridge, which means heading down along the quay until I get to another narrow bridge, which can only cope with traffic one way at a time, and is not the easiest bridge to navigate. It's not normally too bad at this time of the year because the locals know this bridge so well, but in the summer when there are a lot of holiday makers, it can be quite tricky, and it's also not so good when you meet the local bus. I head through the small narrow village on the other side of the bridge, and as I head out the other side of the village, the farm lane will come up on my right hand side. I swing out as wide as possible, and I keep my mirror as close to the cottage as I can. It is a bit of a squeeze, but it is doable if you take your time and use every inch of space that you can. I'm about five minutes early, but luckily the farmer is out ready to load me. I can see that the farmer wants to load me inside the shed, so I pull forwards and then back into the shed. And unlike the roads and lanes coming down here, there is loads of room in this farm, so it doesn't take me long to get manoeuvred around and backed into the shed. I use my remote to take the electric sheet off and while he's loading the first bit I go and make myself another cup of tea just because it is so cold today. So this is the grain passport which you need for every load of grain moved within the UK that is grown in the UK. I check the sticker, make sure the sticker's in date and I need to fill out a few different things like my last three loads, sign it, make sure that the address is on the passport as well but everything looks fine. So I'm just going to fill out my bits and that's done. Wheat is a slightly heavier grain so it fits on the trailer really well and it doesn't take long before it's nearly loaded. I have 23 and a half tonnes on the trailer at the moment and I need 28.2. Right, that's that loaded. So now it's off to Exeter. It should be easier to get out of here than it was to come in. We're just saying, isn't it nice being colder rather than raining and now it's side raining? Because you always talk to the farmers about weather. Very fine rain. To get back to Exeter, I basically need to go back the way I came, which means squeezing past the cottage at the end of the road. Generally, driving a lorry from a narrow space into a wider space is a lot easier than driving a lorry from a wider space into a narrower space. So getting out of the narrow lane into the wider road is a lot easier, especially when the traffic on the road stops to let you out and gives you plenty of space, unlike this van further down, which has just decided to stop awkwardly rather than pulling in. Coming through the village, I seem to have hit some school traffic, which means it takes a bit of waiting patiently to get through.
Then it's back down to the narrow bridge, which from this way is quite hard to see if there's anything coming. So I sneak forward and once I can see that it's completely clear, I head over the bridge and squeeze past a car on the other side. Coming up the hill, I can see that some vehicles have stopped for me as they've clearly looked ahead and seen me coming up from the distance. It's quite unusual for car drivers to look ahead that much, but I'm really grateful that they have on this occasion. As I head back through Kingsbridge, I see something that I wasn't expecting to see in a small seaside town. I spot a truck spotter taking photos. Obviously, trucks do come down to small seaside towns like this because there is a lot of farmland around and the shops and supermarkets need to be restocked for the local people. There is nowhere near as many if you are stood on a busy A road or motorway. And I'm quite hoping that I don't meet another truck as I'm going back through these narrow roads. I take the A381 back to Totnes, which feels like a long, slow road being the size and weight that I am. When I get to Totnes, I spot Neil Conway. People often get me and Neil mixed up, and not because of his dashing good looks, but because our trucks are very similar. There are quite a few slight differences between the trucks. The easiest one to spot on the road is that I have amber lights and Neil has white. I follow the A385 all the way from Totnes up to the A38 and I stay on the A38 until it merges with the M5. I only stay on the M5 for about five minutes and I come off at the next junction. This is a junction for Exeter, but I don't head in towards Exeter, I head in the opposite direction as I am tipping at a place just outside of Exeter. It's only about 10 minutes off the junction and takes me down a windy, narrow lane that says unsuitable for large vehicles. Once I get down to the place where I'm tipping, I turn in and drive straight onto the Weybridge. Take my paperwork into the office, they weigh me in and tell me where to tip. Weighed in and it's got to go in the top right hand corner, but it's looking quite full, so we're going to see what we can do. I need to push it up, but it's yeah, all going all right. in the top right hand corner, so if you can just hang on here. Yeah, for no minutes. worries. Just let Andy move the wagon, it yeah. should be almost done. While I'm waiting, I ring to see what I'm doing next. Hi Gemma. Hi yeah. Um, I'm just about to tip. So my next load is going to be Plymouth up to Manchester. By this point I get the go ahead to go and tip in the shed. And the easiest way to do this is to swing round to the left, where I can pull right down to the bottom and get myself straightened up before reversing back to the bay. This means I am back in the trailer around the corner on my good side. But I do have to watch for the wall on my left as I swing the curb around and I'm heading for the rear right hand bay. So as I straighten up, I need to reverse into the bay on my blind side. I always feel like reversing blindsided is like educated guesswork. Before I even started to reverse back up, I took notice of everything around that bay that could possibly be an obstacle, including the pipe coming down from the ceiling that I need to avoid being right underneath for when I'm tipping. Once I think I'm in the right place, I go to the back of the truck to check where I am and I'm happy with my positioning, so I open the tailboard and I can jump back in to tip the body up. This is a good height shed and I shouldn't have any difficulty tipping wheat in the shed, but I still edge forward slowly and keep checking out of the window that my trailer is not going to hit the roof. I also have the weigher on in the cab so that I can see when the body is empty. Once it's empty, I pull forward slightly so that I'm out of the pile of grain and I put the body down. I'm going to collect aggregate next so it must have a really good sweep out and I need to get rid of all of the grain that's collected on the back of the truck. As you can see, there is not a huge amount left in the trailer, but it still needs to be swept out thoroughly. This grain can easily grow in aggregate. And once it's all swept out, I can do the tailboard up and check for any loose grains that might be hanging around. Then I can put my brush and my gloves away and make my way back onto the weighbridge. And now we are off to there's only one way in and one way out of this place in a truck, so it's back up the narrow lane and I'm heading back towards the M5. I head south on the M5 and at the end of the motorway where it splits, I take the A38. There is a big hill on this section of the A38, but it's no problem for me as I am empty. This journey will take me a little over an hour and is around 45 miles. I take the exit off of the A38 just before the main Plymouth Junction and then head up the long windy roads up to the quarry. There are quite a few quarries up in this area, so the chance of me meeting another lorry is quite high. So I can't film in here. So what I've got to do is put all my orange gear on. Um, once the person in front of me's finished, I wash out the body of the truck. 
have swept it out, but I still need to wash it out as well. And then I can go down to where I'm loading, get loaded, which shouldn't take too long, and job's good in, hopefully. Time is now quarter to 12, and I am feeling a little bit peckish, so I've got 51 minutes driving. Hopefully I can get out of here, get down the road a bit, have some breakfast, lunch, brunch. <laughs> washed out now and I am being loaded um, there's a bit of a he's gonna put a bucket on now you wait quite a big bucket quite a lot of weight in in one bucket they don't put many buckets on so I think there's quite a lot of weight in one bucket I would imagine at least five ton a bucket I get myself weighed out and as I'm heading back down the long windy roads I see Peanut heading up to the quarry. That's both of the aggregate boys spotted today and they are also the other two trucks that have the number plate SEA at the end. I don't have much driving time left at this point so as I head out onto the A38 I'm looking for somewhere to stop. I've pulled into a lay-by on the A38 as I have eight minutes driving left so I need to have a break I've put some porridge in the microwave. I would have liked to have made it to Exeter Services um, to get a shower, but I am over half an hour away from there. Plus, I'm not sure if the shower is even working in there because it is. it was broke yesterday and they said that they were looking into fixing it. But normally when a shower is out of order, it's a few weeks before it's fixed. So I've just looked on Google Maps to see how long it will take me to get to Manchester. I'm going to the top of Manchester and it's going to take me five hours and eight minutes in a car. So in a truck with five hours and 37 minutes left, I'm not sure if I will actually make it. I will have a go. I need to get fuel on the way up and I also need to stop for a shower. I didn't get a shower yesterday because the only service station that I passed, the shower was out of order. And I will also need to stop for another break if I use the whole of my 10 hour drive. I might decide to park up a little bit earlier, stay under a 13, but it's all gonna depend on the traffic, whether I get up there and um, we're just gonna have to see. Right, that's everything done. Food over with and it's off now as far as I can possibly get. Hopefully I can get out of this lay-by because I'm fully loaded. Oh, and I am on a bend and now somebody's coming around the corner. Ugh. Eventually I get out of the lay-by and head all the way up the A38 where I keep going straight on to the M5. At this point I am running low on fuel so I pull in to Sedgemore Services to top up. I need enough fuel to get me up to Manchester, but not too much so that I end up being parked up with a full tank of fuel tonight. Once that's done, I get back on the motorway and I spot Chris James from West Country Bolt going in the opposite direction. And then I head past that famous Bristol landmark, the bit of motorway over the Gordano Valley. A couple of hours later, nearing Birmingham, it starts to get dark. And as per usual, at this time of night, going up through Birmingham, it was stop-start traffic. This will cost me a bit of time, so it's very unlikely now that I will make my destination tonight. I'm also going to need a 45 minute break so that I can use a full 10 hour drive for the day. So I pull into Hilton Park and I manage to get the jammiest spot ever. Oh my goodness, I cannot believe how lucky I've been with that space. Right. Break on. And I did actually prepare my bag earlier. So I am ready. ready to go for a shower and hopefully it won't be out of order because otherwise I've got this perfect space for nothing. Let's see if I have been that lucky. When I get there the shower seems to be locked and there's no one inside so I go and ask for the key. So they can't find the key um, to the shower so I can't have one. I'm back in the truck now. I've had 15 minutes whilst stood there waiting for them to try and find a key. I do have 
a few minutes to hopefully get down to the next services. It's gonna be a bit touch and go, but I should just and just make it to the next services and I'm gonna try there because I couldn't get a shower yesterday because the showers were out of order at Exeter. Can't get a shower here at Hilton Park because they've lost the key. So I'm gonna go and try at the next services. So yes, I did get that most perfect space for nothing. I head back out onto the M6 and I'm hoping that my calculations are correct and I will just about make the next services. I pull into Stafford with just about the right amount of driving time. And when I get into the truck park, there's hardly anyone in here, which is really strange for this time of night. Not that I'm complaining because it made it really easy for me to park. So I've turned up in the services and there's hardly any trucks in here and normally this services is quite a busy services so I'm a bit worried that the showers won't be working here either. So I've made it here with two minutes to spare so I have to have my half an hour. It's lucky in a way that we can split our 45 minute breaks into a 15 and a half hour so that's meant that I could have my 45 in two parts. I cannot tell you how excited I am to see a working shower. It's not getting very warm, but hopefully it'll warm up. It is a shame that every time I go into the services, I feel more stressed coming out than I do going in. And your break is supposed to be for a rest and to chill out and you never feel like that. But I am so happy that I've got my shower. I can't even begin to tell you how much better it feels once you've had a shower especially when you haven't had one the day before. Right, that's that done and dusted. Unfortunately, I haven't had time to have something to eat. I still have something when I park up. It's one hour and 10 minutes up to the place where I'm tipping. And I have one hour and 27 minutes driving. So the one hour and 10 minutes is on Google Maps, so that's in a car. So it might be a bit longer in a lorry. We will have to see. If not, I'll have to park up short. And as I pull out, I'm still confused about how quiet the services is. So it's back onto the M6 again for the final stretch of the journey. When I get to junction 21A, I take the M62 towards Manchester, followed by the M60 at junction 12, and then I take the M66 at junction 18. At this point, I realize it's not sensible to try and make it up to the place where I'm tipping. So I'm going to have to stop short. And I know that there is a little industrial area here. I'm just hoping that all the spaces won't be taken up as most of this industrial area has double yellow lines, even though it's a really wide road and has plenty of space. Unfortunately, I didn't make it up to where I'm tipping, but I am very, very close. In fact, I am 10 minutes away. So I've got 12 minutes driving left. I would have probably got to the gate, but <laughs> I would have risked not being able to park in there. Normally you can park in there, but there is always a risk that it's full. Um, also, I would have needed the driving time to go in around and tip. I felt like it was the more sensible decision to park here rather than push it and take the risk that I would have been able to either park in there and tip in the morning or not be able to have enough driving time to tip. I can get in there at six o'clock tomorrow morning. Um, it's now 8 p.m. So I am going to warm my tea up. The reason I would have really liked to have got it off tonight is because it's sand. And once again, it's been very wet down in the southwest. And now the temperatures have plummeted and it is going to freeze tonight so i don't really want wet sand freezing on my trailer so i'm going to have to be very careful when i tip it in the morning and what i have tonight is a nice homemade stir fry so i'm going to whack that in the microwave and in five minutes it should be done so i made a stir fry on sunday for me and ryan and this is the leftovers it turned out really nice on Sunday, so I'm hoping that it's gonna be really nice tonight as well. That's it, I'm all settled down for the night and my alarm is set for quarter past five, 
which means I should be in the place where I'm tipping for six o'clock. 